Hey guys, welcome back to ILG Season 2 and uh, <clears throat> currently we are having a rematch between uh, Team Nox Gaming on the purple side and uh, Team Low Yellow Hangout on the blue side. Uh, we just had this match two hours ago and this is basically a rematch and it's, uh, I mean, um, both teams were, it's not a rematch exactly but uh, yeah, uh, they have qualified to, you know, face against the exact same team. Uh, yet, yet again, so yeah, we are seeing this uh, same teams facing off for a second time, the second time today. And uh, joined alongside me is DJ Ram. Hey, hey Ram. Ah, uh, uh, so this is gonna jump straight into the bands. Uh, the Victor band. Okay, so we've seen a victor every single game today. So the three games. Sorry, we will. We would have seen a victor every single game today, including this game, if it wasn't banned out because. Uh, we know the victory was target banned towards Forbidden Requiem, even though um, so I think it was who played it last game uh, in on Team Flux Gaming, was it? Victor was on Team Flux Gaming, right? Yeah, Victor was yeah. played by Ripcord on Flux Gaming. Yeah, Ripcord, yeah. So Ripcord did play Victor last game. And so yeah, we saw two continuous Victor games, but this time Forbidden Requiem won't be able to pick up that Victor. He is an amazing Victor, but he won't be able to pick it up. Uh, Synchro usually picks up the Silver, but he's going for the Jinx this time. Shifu has an amazing Morgana. He, uh, that, we were actually talking about an excellent binding from Morgana uh, a little bit earlier, and that was against Nox Gaming. And Cranko was playing Lucian at the time. Uh, Silver actually is picked up by Cranko, so Synchro can't pick it up. But yeah, Cranko did get bound up by Shifu's amazing binding. So yeah, we might be looking at a couple more of those this game. So I'm looking forward to those amazing bindings. Uh, Panda and Pocket picks up his comfort pick uh, with the Javan. Uh, actually, he doesn't go for the Javan. Uh, he's hovering over the Rek'Sai. I want to see a Rek'Sai. If we do see a Rek'Sai, I'd be uh, really keen on seeing something like that. Did you see Panda and Pocket? Um, no, he does go for the Javan, he does go for the J4. Uh, Worst Lord picks up Sejuani. Uh, Sejuani is an amazing champion, especially with the Glacial Prison. Uh, she can actually get a 5-man out down. So, yeah, that they'll be looking forward to that. Um, uh, Team Nox will be looking forward to that. Um, this Jinx pickup, definitely a champion who can just burst down towers, just take it down real fast. Uh, we also see that Lizard is picking up Janna. Seeker's going for Irelia. What do you think about these Irelia pickups, um, Todd? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm not a really good top laner myself, uh, but I do believe that Irelia is one of the strongest leg pushers. She is pretty hard to 1v1, um, especially if she gets going. Nobody can 1v1 the Irelia. So, the split pushing power, th this time here, Seeker actually realized that. Last time when he picked uh, Ken and he couldn't uh, split push at all against a fed uh, Hecarim. So this time he uh, he decides to contract that by picking up that, that Ilelia, one of the strongest split pushers in game. And uh, DJ Ram, I have to point out that most lol for us has been allowed to play his uh, main champion, the Sejuani. And Sejuani mm -hmm. has been uh, consistently the most contested champ uh, a, here in the Indian League gaming ILG uh, and uh, it's his main champ as well so giving away that Sejuani to worst lol forest um, could it be uh, devastating uh, is yet to be uh, seen uh, but we also see that Forbidden Requiem gets his hands on his uh, most played champion as well the Kassadin uh, the Kassadin has been going through a series of buffs and nerves and uh, most of them are nerves but um, yeah, the last 5.6 patch, he was buffed a little bit, um, allowing him to have a little bit of cooldown reduction on his ultimate, though his range on that ultimate was reduced. But yeah, uh, Garbage has locked in that Mundo, so uh, he'll be uh, able to split push as well effectively against Seeker. Uh, it's yet to be seen who actually uh, snowballs uh, in the top lane, so that that person will be the strong split pusher. But uh, since Mundo is just a hard tank he will be able to split push even if you know he loses the lane because he'll just be so damn tanky and Irelia will be building slightly tanky as well so Irelia uh, despite you know if she gets ahead in lane she will not be able to burst on the Mundo so the Mundo will be able to split push as well so uh, this time uh, both these top laners will be picking up that teleport instead of any uh, just 
flat in ninth place. Yeah, as, so, you, as you said, Todd, um, about Forbidden Requiem and uh, his uh, ma- most played champion, Kassadin. Forbidden Requiem's Kassadin is definitely a threat for Nox Gaming because he split pushes like crazy. He does not worry. He split pushes as a mid laner. Uh, not many people. Uh, the only other split pushing mid laner that I, mid champion or mid laner that I know of is Zed, and no one else really uh, split pushes other than Zed. And just seeing a castle and do it, and Forbidden Requiem does it really, really well. Especially his um, rift box. He knows uh, the cooldowns perfectly. He u- utilizes the cooldowns perfectly. Make sure that he doesn't completely run out of mana. And he's just an amazing castle and player. As you're talking about garbage and his mundo. Uh, the simple fact that he actually got his hands on a Mundo is really good because Mundo is a late game massive tank. No one can take down Mundo. He also has the damage to complement that tank status. Uh, we actually see number one pick up the Syndra. Uh, I'm actually surprised about the Syndra pickup. It's not a conventional pickup. I haven't seen it uh, often in the ILG. I'm not sure if you have, but I haven't seen the um, Syndra often. Uh, but it might be a good pickup against Kassan, it might not be, you'll have to see that as the game progresses. Uh, Seeker's Irelia, Irelia will be the key to taking down Synchro, and I think they will have to take down Synchro if uh, Nox Gaming will be looking to win, win out this game. Uh, so my predictions for how to go about that is Seeker has to jump onto Synchro, take Synchro down, and then focus Forbidden Requiem, because we know for a fact Forbidden Requiem, no matter what, he is going to get damage down. He's going to Rift Walk in, uh, QE, and then, well, he's probably going to Zonia's. But, yeah, if, um, uh, within that time, the only thing that Nox Gaming could possibly do is focus the singer, focus Synchro, take down the Jinx, and hopefully just peels for Cranko. Cranko played an amazing game last game, uh, Nox Gaming versus Flux. And, of course, Nox did win Flux to um, get into third place and... Now they're hoping to get into second place. But we do have to remember that Nox Gaming actually lost to Loila Hangout a, a, game, a couple of games ago. So they will be looking to redeem their status into and getting into second place. Uh, hopefully looking forward to beating Ruthless Gaming straight after that. But yeah, we'll have to just hold on uh, on the uh, hold off on the predictions right now against Ruthless Gaming because we don't even know if they're going to beat uh Loilo hangout right now but my prediction right now for who might be winning this game is Loilo hangout because they seem to have just this massive late game of course um team nox does have a late game but not as strong as uh Loilo hangout what do you think todd indeed, indeed i was about to say the exact same thing but uh they can uh, counter it uh contract that by making use of the early game and mid game power where uh, when uh, Irelia picks up uh, Trinity Force and the Syndra's mid game as well, <clears throat> the catch potential with the Syndra, with the Cranko, as in uh, with the Severe uh, played by Cranko uh, and Sijuani as well, they can actually easily uh, you know catch out people uh, maybe near the Dragon Pit uh, just before the Dragon or you know so yeah uh, so the catch power of Team Nox Gaming is um, uh, better as opposed to uh, team uh, uh, loyal or hangout, but yeah, as the game draws uh, near the uh, toward the late, late stages of the game, as you pointed out, team uh, loyal or hangout has the better champions to pull off the victory. As Mondo will pretty much be unkillable, Kasten is gen- uh, just going to be rough walking here and there, and he's going to be really hard to catch up uh, as well. Uh, but um, we are yet to see if that severe pick uh, can work against the Kasten because, in theory. Uh, Cassidy's uh, rift walk uh, is what lets him escape, and that can be uh, uh, contradicted with uh, Sivir's ultimate, which gives the entire team a lot of movement speed. So, um, so yeah, we'll have to see how that works out. And uh, I'm happy to see that uh, Number One is actually sticking over, over with the Syndra, despite it not being a very popular pick here in ILG, uh, because he has to make sure that he gets a lead in the initial stage of the game. If he actually falls behind the cast in the early stages of the game, that's going to smell disaster for um, the Nox Gaming. So hopefully, with the help of um, Worst Lord Forest Sejuani, he will manage to uh, at least far- out-farm the cast in the mid lane and uh, 
buy, buy his initial items, catch out people coming toward the dragon and get a couple of dragons in Team Nox Cayman's favor. Um, so yeah, the, those yes, are so my ideas for also, these team comps. Yeah, yes, I actually think, think of the, the bot lane, uh, Sivir Janna versus um, Jinx and Morgana. Uh, we have to remember that Sivir's uh, multiple shots, uh, it actually props with Janna's shield. So she gets the extra damage off Janna's shield. She can put down damage like crazy. Usually we see Janna and uh, Jinx matching up together. Uh, a Janna support on Jinx because uh, Jinx just utilizes a long range with, uh, I think it's the shark gun or something sorry forgive me for not knowing the na uh, name it's fishbone it's a rocket launcher so just dealing massive damage with the jana but this time it's the jana is facing off against the jinx along with the sibyl so i'm looking forward to a lot of fights happening at the bot lane this time i usually i would be favoring the mid lane and looking forward to a lot of fights in the mid lane but this time i'm looking forward to the bot lane it seems like Sivir is looking to do damage uh, along with the Janna. Uh, as far as the game goes, it's just uh, started, we're about 50 seconds into the game. And it's just a passive start, neither of the teams are actually putting down any damage. Javin just ran, lands a flag onto Franco, but other than that, um, nothing big happening. Wards here and there, in fact near the Baron Brush, the ward hasn't even been placed. Um, it's actually near, just behind the blue buff. Uh, Sejuani is just zoning out the zoning out garbage and forbidden requiem who is on this cassadin uh seeker is just there to support worse law but beyond that nothing big is happening it's just standard laning and actually the, oh no sejuani is actually moving towards the bot lane to um take the groms she won't be starting near the red but seeker is covering the red in case there is any form of invade uh there is a ping from uh nox gaming but I don't think it was an aggressive ping. No, it's actually ping towards the red to just take care of the red buff. But beyond that, everything's fine. Garbage is actually standing right on top of a ward. I think he knows there's a ward, and he's just uh, telling them, "I know there it is. I know it's there." Uh, standard uh, starts for the junglers. Uh, say John is starting on the Gromps, and J4 is just starting on the Krugs. He'll be moving to the red, and say Johnny will be moving to the blue. Uh, so starting items. Standard starting items. <clears throat> uh, Irelia starts with the Crystalline Flask. Uh, Mundo, as he does with the Doran Shield, we see Shifu putting down some early damage. Uh, Jinx is just trying to push in the wave so that they can get it to get to level two as early as possible. Shifu just misses the binding just by a bit. I think he just chucked it out there just to zone them out a bit. Nothing big. He wasn't particularly planning on hitting it or anything. So. Um, Synchro is still trying to just push in for level 2. We might see a level 2 engage because Shifu seems really, really aggressive. He's just moving up and uh, poking. Garbage takes a bit of damage from Seeker. Shifu misses another binding, uh, but he does deal a lot of damage to Lizard. Uh, Shifu puts down the tormented soil. Synchro takes a, a boomerang to the face. Uh, Cranker's just hitting him. Missed the third binding. Shifu's missed three bindings now in a row. Um, but we do have to say that Shifu's been... Sorry. Uh... Sorry, uh, we do have to say that Shifu does possess a lot of skills, so he will uh, bring that back. And Synchro takes quite a bit of damage, he's down less than half health. Uh, Shifu's just missing a bar of health. Cranko is down on mana, uh, but that shouldn't matter too much. Uh, number one is actually taking quite some damage. What do you think about this mid lane, Todd? I do feel that the Cassidy is actually annoying to deal with. Uh... He's mm -hmm. actually a beast late game and though he's not a high kill threat champion in the mid lane because uh, he doesn't have the ultimate which you know takes you from 100 to 0 but you will know that when you're you know around that 30% 40% uh, HP you will have to back away because at that point Kassin will be able to jump in and kill you so unlike other you know other normal AP mids where you know you have to be scared of your health bar you know uh, you can even uh, you have to you know base even if you had like you know 80% HP you'll have to play it really carefully but against mm -hmm. Kassadin that mark comes down to around 40% uh, uh, or so but then um, Kassadin is annoying to deal with especially against a player like uh, Forbidden Requiem who plays a lot of Kassadin because uh, he will use that um, 
few of his where it soaks up a lot of magic damage dealt to him and he'll be dealing damage in return so he'll be timing his cues perfectly when i was sindra's ca casting her cue so so yeah castner is pretty annoying to deal with both in lane and uh as uh, meanwhile we see a gang coming on to the top lane uh counter gank as well seeker has the low health and mana worst lord forest will be chased out pan and pocket actually had to flash to get that and that that will actually force a return flash on to worst lord forest sejuani as well so both junglers burning flash and no first blood will return as a binding gets um spell shielded by krango in the bot lane I think there was actually oh actually Panda and Pocket re-engages onto Westlaw right now. Seeker's taking a bit of damage from Garbage. Might see Westlaw go down. No, Panda and Pocket gets stunned up by Seeker. We might see Seeker going down, but he does have his flash. I'm actually surprised that oh no, he actually flashes in. So oh my god, Seeker actually uh gets taken down trying to take down Panda and Pocket. It was well played by Panda and Pocket. He has his blue buff up. They might be looking to dive Westlaw. Uh Panda and Pocket might just do a drive by. Panda and Pocket gets taken down by uh Westlaw. Westlaw with the plays. Uh, that was really well played by Burstlaw. Garbage is running away with the double buffs. Um, Seeker's coming in really hard, but he decides to just take the farm rather than trying to chase Garbage because definitely, I don't think he could have been he would have been able to get it. Uh, Lizard get, takes a binding to the face of the bot lane and uh, also a tormented soil. Uh, Crank on Lizard are actually doing really really well. This is what I was saying when I said that. Lizard shield onto Cranko will help them. Synchro and um, Shifu are actually pushed up. It's, uh, I think it's the second time that they've been pushed up uh, into the uh, bot lane tower. As far as um, CS is go going, uh, Cranko is about, I think, 6 CS uh, lead over Synchro. Uh, up at the top lane, there's a 7 CS lead by Seeker onto Garbage. Uh, the, as far as the mid lane is concerned, as you were saying, Todd, this Cassidyn is annoying to deal with. He's dealing a lot of damage at the same time. Uh, well, uh, he's de dealing average damage, but it's pretty good damage for a champ that's supposed to go into late game, not do so much damage in the early game. He's doing really, really well at mid lane. The Cassidyn's actually got a lead of about uh, 8 CS um, onto the Syndra. Seeker's getting zoned out because of the double buffs on, uh, on Garbage, which is really, really good. Uh, we might be seeing a, mi a mid gank by Worst Law, but... Forbidden Requiem does well to dodge out the Q from Merslol and also the stun from Numberon. So uh, this is a beautiful play by Forbidden Requiem but yeah I have to give it to him, he is such an amazing player. We actually see an engage onto Garbage from Seeker but seems that Seeker is taking down just more damage than he's actually putting out. We might see Seeker going down, uh, I don't know why Garbage is waiting, oh he was actually waiting because he's taking hits from the tower. Might see Seeker going down, Seeker will go down, Seeker does go down. Uh, but worst law might be here to pick up a kill onto garbage. Garbage uh, knows that he's probably gonna die, so he's just clearing out a bunch of minions, and he's gonna try to take down worst law. That was beautiful juking from garbage. He just pretty much walks away, but we will see garbage go down in just a bit. Uh, actually, we don't or see not. garbage going down. Uh, garbage, I mean, worst law does not garbage. have a flash. Yeah, but uh, we do but see the Q in from worst law. Uh, it was inevitable, mm. but. Uh, this is well played by uh, Team Loyola Hangout because Panda and Pocket uh, and the rest of the team just went down and picked up the dragon. Uh, this is really, really well played by Garbage. He not only took down uh, Irelia, played by Seeker, but he also spent uh, wasted a lot of time. Um, I mean, he also made a worse lot waste a lot of time on that stage, running, trying to chase down the Mundo for the kill, which pretty much uh, guaranteed them the dragon. This is well played by Loyola Hangout. They made the uh, best of a bad situation. This is really good. Uh, Forbidden Requiem is pretty much pushing Syndra into the tower. This is not something that I actually expected uh, because Syndra has a lot of range. So I'm actually quite surprised that Forbidden Requiem has just pushed her into the tower. Uh, but she is holding on in lane. Uh, she's about 8 CS down. And as far as the bot lane is concerned, as I've uh, mentioned before, Cranko is pushing straight up into the tower. Uh, the Jinx will miss a wave, a complete, a full wave, and Cranko is about 13 CS in the lead. Um, nothing big happening at bot. They've just been uh, trading evenly. Uh, actually, Cranko is trading a bit better than uh, Synchro. But this is looking good for both teams. Uh, I actually like how evenly the matchup is going, uh, except for the one kill and one dragon lead on the side of um, 
low elo hangout but that was expected as low elo hangout did win against Knox gaming uh, a couple of games ago uh at the top lane garbage is pushing up so there's a gank on top by worse lol right now um todd what do you think about this gank uh this is a much re required gank for seeker because the mundo is very fat and in He'll bully out the Aurelia in every split push all day long. Will Garbage make it out alive? Gaston is there to help. Meanwhile, action happens in the bot lane as well. As a good flash out of Cranko will keep him alive for, for the moment. And Garbage actually manages to survive that gang. Thanks to a little bit of help from Cassidy as well. As uh, number one on that Sintra was actually forced to you know stick around in the mid lane and farm out. Meanwhile, action again going into the bot lane. A binding gets spell shielded beautifully. And a spell sheet on onto the Jinx as well. As Pan and Pocket gets taken really low, we'll uh, go down to number ones, Ignite, Ignite, and uh, Jinx gets taken down by teleport from Irelia in the bot lane as well. Shifu gets caught by Cranko. Cranko will pick up a kill onto Shifu on the Morgana, and the Juani has been caught at her own red buff when Mundo picks up yet another kill. The Mundo is four one and zero, sixty eight farm in. 10 minutes he is massively fed and he remember he's a very late game champion as well when a late game champion is fed as this much he's going to be a lot of trouble Kranko's going to have a really hard time dealing with that mundo though Kranko is kind of ahead in his lane at the moment 90 cs 101 as opposed to just a 66 and a 010 the Mundo is go uh, just going to be dashing right in his face. Forcing Cranko, you know, he'll, he'll, so Cranko will have to use his Pearl Shield for just a Mundo's cleaver. Uh, or he will actually take a lot of damage. So yeah, uh, l allowing that window of opportunity for people like Kastrin and even Javin to, you know, c combo severe uh, when Mundo is, you know, on, on Cranko's face. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this for sure, Todd. This Mundo is paying dividends. He's playing so so well. You actually see the Irelia really moving up to mid lane. Uh, they're looking to help Number One just win this lane, but uh, because he's falling behind uh, considerably, uh, he's already uh, he's already died once, and the Kassadin's only pulling ahead. And as you mentioned, he Kassadin and Mundo are both late game, and they don't want Kassadin to be to reset late game any, any earlier than he should be. Uh, Sheaf was actually trying his best uh, to just protect his ADC, but now he's roaming up to the mid lane. He's being spotted up by a ward, so his ADC is left unprotected. Uh, Synchro should be careful, but I don't think anyone's trying to take down Synchro right now. He actually just pushes up the wave. He's going under tower, but Janna will shield out the tower. That's uh, that's uh, that's good of her. Uh, well, Panda and Pocket is actually moving up top lane, but uh, there are pings down uh, near the pink ward right behind the Baron. And Panda and Pocket's going in. Forbidden Requiem goes up really hard on. Wow, that was beautiful. That 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 was a wombo right there. Panda and Pocket still going hard on worse lol. Forbidden Requiem under the tower. He's taking shots from the tower. He takes about four shots from the tower. That was a beautiful play from Jinx. Um, Forbidden Requiem on the Cassidy and Panda and Pocket just. To just take down uh, both number one and worst lord for us so fast. That was well played by them. Uh, meanwhile, Garbage is just pushing up the top lane. Uh, Garbage is such a great top laner, and Seeker just dodges out the uh, a hit from Garbage with his cleaver by queuing onto a uh, minion. So, this is beautiful play from uh, Low Elo Hangar. This just shows you the amount of skill that this team possesses and why Nox Gaming had such. A difficult game against them a couple of games ago, right, Todd? Indeed. Uh, you got to know that uh, this is the second match these both teams are facing against each other, and the first time uh, uh, Loyola Hangout did come out on top. So, in terms of mentality alone, team uh, Loyola Hangout has a plus one. So that is going to be giving them a mental edge going in uh, into this game, um, and. Team Nox Gaming is already feeling a little pressured as it looks like uh, the mid is having trouble, the top is having a lot of trouble. So, um, since the bot lane of uh, Nox Gaming has won out pretty convincingly, they are putting a lot of pressure onto the mid lane by sending uh, Cranko into the mid lane. That is a good move because, uh, uh, you know. Uh, there was uh, nothing left for Cranker to do in the bot lane once the tower was taken uh, until the lane just gets pushed up uh, like right now he has, go, has to go back. Meanwhile we could be seeing the first dragon fight of the game. 
Both teams clear on the, uh, clearing up vision near the Dragon Pit area as Garbage takes a little bit of poke damage. He still has his ult up. He, he's not in any great deal of pressure as he's actually going a little aggressive onto the Syndra. Yeah, just uh, talking about Cranker, we, uh, <laughs> being such a great ADC, uh, I'll just mention that Cranker is not a part of uh, Team North Gaming. He's actually just subbing in for them or just filling in. Uh, and he's not even an ADC main, is he, Todd? He's a support main for Ruthless Gaming. So Indeed. this is beautiful play from Cranker. He's playing like he's been playing ADC for all his life. That's how well he's playing right now. Uh, he was really great on the Graves last game. Uh, against Flux Gaming and he's really doing well on the server this game. There's a beautiful um, Frozen Prison from Sejuani but there's no follow-up because I actually that was a defensive Frozen Prison. She just wanted to get out of there because she takes more than half health and this might have just guaranteed the Dragon for um, Team Loyola Hangout. Uh, the Dragon's about 2k health right now and it will go down to Loyola Hangout. Uh, the top laner that is Munda actually picks it up. Uh, garbage with the beautiful Sorry, yeah, Garbage actually picks up Dragon and then teleports back top. I was actually wondering, I just saw Garbage pick up the Dragon and then suddenly I just see Garbage right up top and I was like wondering where, where how the hell did that happen, but uh, he just teleports up top and I really have moving up top to defend against um, Garbage's push. Worst lol just picks up the red red buff and we see a three man mid, Forbidden Requiem, Panda in pocket and Shifu and the Morgana are all at mid and we just see number and just dodge out. A binding from Shifu. Uh, Shifu is one of the best Morgana players I've seen so dodging his bindings are not easy so I have to give credit to number one for doing that. Uh, the mid lane tower for the red team that is um, Nox Gaming just takes a little bit of damage not no, it's pretty negligible whereas for Loila Hangar it's actually nearly down so yeah so right now as far as towers are concerned uh, Nox Gaming is uh, sort of in the lead uh, we actually see Synchro nearly take down Cranko. Cranko takes a lot of damage. He's uh, got about four bars of health left, and we might uh, see Synchro just try to take him down. But Synchro is afraid that they may there might be someone covering for him, and he just runs all the way back to his Krugs. He might be, just be taking the Krugs. No, he actually decides to go back to clear the wave, and there are pings onto Shifu. Shifu standing right on top of a wall, uh, but he walks away. Gets stunned up, lands a binding onto number one. Number one takes uh, an orb to the face, but nothing, nothing more. Um, yeah, but then uh, up at the top lane, garbage is just dealing some damage onto Seeker. It's pretty negligible. He gets slowed down under the tower, but garbage is just way too tanky. And as you had mentioned, Todd, garbage is getting to late game at an early game position. So this is really well played from Garbage. We actually see the bot tower go down meanwhile to Synchro. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the Jinx is just gonna bash down these towers really easily. Number one actually takes a null sphere to the face yet again and a uh, binding uh, uh, onto her. Uh, Seeker is gonna go back uh, to the base and probably teleport back in uh, if Garbage can push this wave out really fast, but no, he actually decides to stay back. Yeah, so let's just talk about these items now, um, Todd. Uh, we see Sir, uh, Sivir has her Infinity Edge completed along, uh, and Jinx also has her Infinity Edge completed. Sivir is, um, yeah, Sivir is actually doing pretty well compared to the Jinx. She hasn't died yet and is holding uh, holding her ground against Jinx, even though Loila Hangout is doing better than them. Uh, if you look at this top lane, though, Todd, uh, just... What are your comments on the CS difference right now? Indeed, uh, you got to know that uh, Munda had a three kill at the three kills at the very beginning of the game, thanks to a gank and a counter gank, which went horribly wrong for Team Nox's gaming. Uh, that actually got him three kills at the very beginning of the game, causing Irelia to play back the entire time. And right now, he's three levels under that Mundo. So, meanwhile, action coming over near the Dragon Pit area as the Dragon is spawning in a minute. Uh, Synchro gets a little caught out. He will get bursted down by Syndra he, and he will be taken out by Worst Lol Forest. The Shifu is uh, forced out of the fight on the side but Worst Lord Forest will be chasing him looking for to pick up get another kill on the other good stun from Syndra comes up and yes that is exactly what uh, team um, uh, Nox Gaming wanted a little bit of a breather so that uh, Mundo was 
cliff pushing top and Kasdan could actually go down right here. Forced by Kasdan, no flash, follow flash by Kranko and that will be a kill picked up on the Kasdan as well. So that will actually mean two, uh, two mid turrets going and Garbage will be forced to use his ult in the top lane. We actually yeah, see uh, Jinx salting in the mid tube. Uh, we actually see Jinx salting in the mid tube, but uh, she just misses worse. Lol, uh, that's sad for her. But speaking of breathers, Todd, I wish we could get a breather. These guys are fighting all over the map. Having to just cast this is just so chaotic and so difficult. So you can just imagine uh, how much how they feel right now. If we are so stressed out to cast this game, uh, they are definitely they've been um, playing three games continuously. Nox Gaming. And they've been fighting continuously. They've done so, so, so well. Both teams have done so well. Uh, but this time, Nox Gaming did come out ahead. And I actually think if Nox Gaming can keep this up, they can close this game out. But uh, they do have to stay as a team. They do have to trust each other and try to do exactly what they did this time. They had such good team coordination over there. Uh, we actually saw that Garbage did not teleport in. I think his teleport was still on a 10 second cooldown. Because he had used it before to come up after the dragon fight. We'll see the dragon coming in in 50 seconds. And of course, um, Garbage will have his teleport, whereas Seeker will not have his teleport. So that's an advantage. Garbage can keep pushing up top really, really hard. And I really will have to defend. It's either they go for dragon or they lose the top, top tower. Yeah. So second tier top tower. So yeah, so that's their uh, well, trade off right there. Uh, Forbidden Requiem gets stunned up. Shifu is just there to support Forbidden Requiem. Synchro is actually up at mid. I think they're going to be forcing mid so that uh, the red team, that is uh, Team Nox, does not have a chance to go to the dragon. So they're just going to be pressuring the mid lane. So there, there is no chance for Team Nox to go to the dragon. We'll also see that Mundo is actually moving straight up to the mid lane. Uh, I would. Opposed is I actually think that Mundo should be going up to the top lane, but I think he's trying to save his teleport, so he's gonna go straight to the dragon. We actually see there are pings up near the Baron uh, by the red team, and no one is moving up to the dragon yet. Actually, I think that Nox Gaming is moving straight to the dragon. They they think that they really need this dragon right now. They don't want to lose another dragon and make it a three dragon lead uh, by Team Loyola Hangout. They're sort of in the lead right now, so they might as well try to just push this lead as fast as possible. Forbidden Requiem gets queued to the face by Wurstlaw. Garbage gets pushed out by Janna. We actually see Pan and Pocket going down. Wurstlaw will probably go down next to the Mundo. Mundo takes down Wurstlaw. Seeker also goes down. Uh, and I really guess say I really gets taken down by Jenks. Uh, Cracko might be going down to Mundo. Mundo is just a beast. Uh, number one actually takes down the Jinx. Munda gets a triple kill uh, onto Janna. He might be chasing, chasing number one, but no, he decides to take down the cra uh, sorry the scuttle crab while he's there because he knows he can't take down the he can't take down number one, especially when he's got the stun up. Um, I don't think garbage garbage is actually trying for the dragon. He's doing quite a bit of damage. Uh, he's doing a lot of damage actually, Todd. So this is. Uh, this is why I like Mundo so much. He's tanky. He does a lot of damage. I, okay, we actually see Number One coming back to try to prevent the dragon from being taken. But Garbage takes a lot of damage. He gets stunned up. Uh, garbage will not go down. Actually, we see that Number One gets um, bound to the face, and she actually takes Tom into soil. We see Mundo gets shut down uh, by Syndra. Worst Lord is still going hard, and he's actually going straight for the dragon. He might be trying to take the dragon. Pattern Pocket just steals it out. He does it really, really well. Worst Lord really nearly goes down. Seeker is going on Forbidden, forbidden Requiem, but probably see, Forbidden Requiem re engages onto Seeker. He's still going hard. Synchro takes down Seeker. He's going on Cranko now. He's got, he just got a crit shot. Uh, Cranko uses a spell shield. Worst Lord will be taken down next by Synchro. Uh, Shifu nearly gets taken down. Synchro goes down. And Janha and Sivir go down simultaneously. Kassadin with a triple kill right there. This Kassadin is paying out dividends. He's doing really, really well. He's 5 to 5 now. He's completed his Rod of Ages on his way, I think, to a uh, Void Staff and uh, simultaneously to uh, an Hourglass. Don't so he's doing yeah. really, really well. Definitely doing really, really well. So, what are your predictions for this game now? Because um, there are three dragons on the side of. Um, sorry, on the side of. Sorry, I've actually forgot the team's name. Uh, um, Loyola Hangout. Yeah, Loyola Hangout. So there's actually three dragons on the side of Loyola Hangout. There's no dragons on the side of Nox Gaming. There's 16 kills to 15. Uh, there's about a 
1.5k goal lead. So who do you think uh, has a better chance of winning this game right now, uh, Todd? So far things are looking good for Team Loyola Hangout, I gotta say, just because of the simple fact that despite having a better late game, they are coming out better in the mid game and early mid game as well. Uh, and not to mention there are three dragons uh, in their favor. Uh, but uh, the uh, team Nox Gaming does have an extra tower, but that might not stand as Mundo will just be, uh, as you can see uh, in the bot lane, just split pushing. Uh, if we notice, uh, Ram, that Mundo is level 15, that's cool. three levels ahead of anybody else on the entire game right now. Yeah, he's three been levels above anybody game. else. But we actually see the Baron uh, being taken by Franco. They're trying their uh, best to take down the Baron, but they can't. Garbage just. Um, Teleports in, the ball, Morgana Binding just misses on Verse Lol. I don't think it would have made much of a difference, but it just misses. Uh, Garbage is still chasing up, he actually hits up Lizard. Uh, Seeker stuns down Forbidden Requiem, we see uh, Jinx's ult coming in. Uh, Panda and Pocket is first one to go down, surprisingly. Verse Lol is going hard on Garbage, Garbage gets uh, ignited to stop his healing uh, effect. Uh, Seeker is still running away, Lizard gets stunned up by Morgana with the Soul Shackles. Might see Seeker, Seeker going down next. We actually see a triple kill onto the Jinx. Might see a quadra, but no. Uh, Kassarin picks up that uh, last kill and makes it an ace. So that was definitely not worth it for Nox. They just completely lost it there. And Panda and Pocket is the only one that goes down. So that's a 1 for 5. And this is a, a Baron pickup for um, Team Blow Hello Hangout. So Synchro will easily take down this Baron along with the Tormented Soil from Morgana. And after this Baron, I think. The game is pretty much out of hand, out of the hands of Nox Gaming, isn't it, Todd? Indeed, it's totally because of the fact that that, that almost looked like a desperation baron for Team Nox, and uh, they did see that the Mundo was pushing on the second tier bot turret as well. So they were starting to get a little, little desperate. They were uh, they realized that they had to give up that second tier tower. They wanted to fight. Uh, wh what went wrong was that all five members of Team Nox uh, did take a lot of uh, damage from the Baron itself and uh, they are behind in this game guys uh, and also to mention the fact that the Mundo is so far ahead in terms of both items and levels he's three levels ahead and uh, another fight erupts as well they are fighting a Baron up team as it really are teleports in Mundo doesn't have a teleport it is uh, slowly joining the fight Cranko gets to take a little low Mundo is on, on Cranko's behind as uh, Kassin jumps in the middle of everybody and Zonia's himself, uh, Shifu, Morgana, Shifu and the Morgana will be taken out by that Irelia, but Irelia uh, in return will be taken down uh, by that Jinx as well. And that Mundo looks unstoppable as how long are you going to kite those cleavers, uh, says that Mundo, when it will just be an easy kill for that Mundo to pick up. That was, this Mundo is a beast. Man, he's I have I, I absolutely I no see. words right now. I'm speechless Indeed. with this Mundo. He's full on health and he's just rushing them. He, you can just see his um, build right there. It's completely health uh, health based and and armor based, and he's doing so so well. He does have uh, magic resist with the spirit massage. He's doing so so well, and this will be the first inhibitor in favor of uh, Loilo Hangout. <laughs> And you can just see how Low Elo Hangout beat Nox Gaming, uh, Nox Gaming the first time. Uh, they're doing so so well. They're um, they're dominating. Well, they they had an even more dominating performance the first game around. But they have started to dominate this game too, especially with this Mundo. This I can't stop talking about this Mundo. He's just amazing. He's doing so so well. He's ten two and seven. Look at Mundo I'm right not now. Sure He's going against four man people. gank will work, man. Yeah, Mundo I don't think walk it's going to He's regenerating more than the damage he's taking from four exactly. members. <laughs> it's like people do damage him and help him regen. That's how it looks. And yeah, so he's healing off their damage. And Garbage is pretty much just clearing out the wave right now. And if he wanted, it seemed like he could actually fight them 1v3 and not have any damage taken uh, by him. Uh, the, the only way I think to kill Mundo would be by number one uh, using the Ignite. He needs to use that Ignite on Mundo just to stop the healing effect. Uh, if not, there is absolutely no other way to take down the Mundo, especially with his healing rate. This is just crazy. We also see the uh, last will pick up by um, the Jinx. So, I don't know. The Sejuani is going to go down even faster. And we have the first pause of the game, which is surprising. Uh, there's a DC on Loilo Hangout. 
but we will be back in game soon enough. Uh, there's a there's a Abyssal Scepter pick up by uh, Cassidy. I'm not sure how necessary the Abyssal Scepter is right now because uh, oh, actually it is quite necessary because I really actually picks up a Negatron Cloak and uh, there's a Spectre Scowl on the Sejuani, so that was a necessary pickup. Uh, that was my bad. Uh, we will be seeing the reconnection in about half a minute because we just saw a reconnection. They'll be resuming in about half a minute. Uh, there's an early locket of the Iron Solari, which is good by uh, Jav It's not early particularly, but he does have a locket of the Iron Solari. He did um, have a locket of the Iron Solari last game, but uh, the last time he played Javan. So I really li like the uh, Panda and Pocket's Javan, but I always want I also want to know what other champions he plays. Do you know what other champions Panda and Pocket can play, uh, Todd? Um, no, I believe he plays a lot of support mm -hmm. uh, because I read uh, posts on Facebook saying that he's one of the best supports in Bangladesh. So I'm not sure about. Um, uh, these players, yep. yeah, all these. I'm not sure about the Bangladesh roster exactly. Mm -hmm. I'll only see them whenever they appear in these algae and other similar tournaments. So, yeah, I mostly know about only Indian players. And yeah, uh, a couple of minutes ago, I, I kept get, uh, getting a lot of pokes from a couple of my friends saying that Cranko also means ADC. Um, uh, but the fact to be noted is that Cranko is a support main currently. He used to main ADC a long time ago. That was mm -hmm. like a couple of months ago when he used to main ADC and he used to uh, play it for team Neckbreak NB. Um, but that uh, team uh, disbanded like many months ago and so yeah, it is arguable that he knows how to ADC as well mm -hmm. as any other ADC here. But um, just the fact that he's not in touch with that role, he's been only supporting on the majority of the games because he's been practicing support for Team Ruthless Gaming. Uh, he's supporting uh, India's, one of India's best AD carries, uh, Brutality. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out that he does know how to ADC, but just been like, but he's still, really, he's, really well. yeah, yeah, he's doing really well. He's the only one on uh, Nox Gaming side that actually won his lane. He got the tower. He was trying to help mid, but they just they were just too far ahead that they couldn't even you know pressure the mid lane. They didn't have a proper siege. Uh, they did have uh, the Syndra to you know siege, but they didn't you know they weren't able to catch anybody out. So yeah, that Mundo just got two huge the triple kill at the very uh, early stages of the game. Just got him snowballing right, right off that. That was no coming back uh, when there's a fed Mundo. Uh, as you can see, he's like uh, still he's currently level 17 as opposed to a highest level 13. So he's still four levels currently above anybody else on Team Knox Gaming. So yeah, that guy's just gonna be unstoppable. Nobody's gonna be able to kill, kill him the entire game. Uh, unless you send all five members and still, I still don't think they'll be able to finish him because he'll just walk out of there uh, with his ultimate. Yeah, for the past couple of fights, uh, Team Knox has been aced twice and both the times together, I'm not even talking about individual performance, um, both the times uh, Mundo has been the key for Loi Lo Hangout and the number of kills that Knox Gaming got in those fights was three. For both the fights, that is, our uh, first fight they took down Panda and Pocket. Second fight they took Panda and Pop. They took down Panda and Pocket and Shifu, and that was it. And they were aced twice for that. So, Nox Gaming, if they want, I don't know if they can pull this game back. But I don't. I don't even think they can pull this game back unless Mundo just decides to go AFK. Seriously, that's how hard <laughs> this game is. It's uh, practically also, impossible. They have four dragons as well. Yeah, the four dragons are not helping either. So, yeah, I don't, I really don't uh, think that this game is at all in the favor of Nox Gaming, or it's not even looking like they can even make a comeback. They're pushed into the tower. They're looking to engage onto the Jinx, hopefully, because that's the only way to win this match. They need to kill the Jinx off and then kill Forbidden Requiem. And we managed to see Jinx go down. The Jinx leader, goes down immediately be, to center. They should be off. This should be the best comeback they could possibly hope for. They should fight it out. There's actually a pause immediately. I think uh, Jinx might have just DC'd. Yep, so she did DC under the tower. I was expecting that because it seemed like Jinx walked up to the tower and she does not flash out, she does not heal or anything. She just stands under the tower. So 
Yeah, that's just a DC. It's something that does happen with the Asian internet service. So, yeah, uh, don't worry about that too much, guys. But, yeah, so she will reconnect in just a bit. But that does mean that uh, Team Loyola hang up might just lose this fight, doesn't it, Todd? Uh, possibly. Let's see how big that window is. Despite being that fat, uh, uh, we have to see if without the AD carry and the jungle of being taken down before the fight even erupted. Let's see if they can actually win this 3v5. This is the best fight team Knox could hope for. The only possibility of a comeback, if there was any. Let's see if they can actually pull this off and uh, kill that Mundo eventually. Yeah, I actually hope this Mundo actually, uh, as soon as we unpause, I hope this Mundo actually stays back and fights the 4v1. I would love to see that just happening. I don't want Mundo just just back off. The smart thing would be for Mundo to just back off because uh, the only people that are alive right now are Shifu, uh, the Mundo, and I actually think uh, Forbidden Requiem, uh, actually Forbidden Requiem won't go down because he'll just riff walk out. He actually, his riff walk is on cold, uh, it's out of cooldown, so he'll be fine, he'll probably escape. Uh, but I want to see this Mundo just fight them head on. I want to see some really good stuff. Um, yeah, so I think Synchro just reconnected. We're waiting for an unpause. Um, he might have just DC'd yet again. Uh, okay, we're, we're actually waiting on the enemy team too. So that is uh, Team Nox. Team Nox is also wants a pause. So they're just holding on. So we'll be back soon enough, guys. So let's just talk about these items now. Uh, I really uh, still stuck on that single item with the Triforce. This is 30 minutes and uh, compared to Mundo, he's got four items. What do you think about this, um, Todd? I just noticed that um, uh, Ram, that Mundo is yeah. pretty much full build these five items. He's on his way to completing his fifth item. Probably if he manages to actually kill Nox Gaming 1v3v5, uh, it's a possibility because he's that far ahead. Will he be that tanky enough? He is the target of focus. Forbidden Requiem, uh, he's taking tanking so much damage in the front. Forbidden Requiem will now be the target of choice as Seeker uh, goes in onto him as Mundo is peeling for the cast. And Forbidden Requiem is actually, actually kills off the Aurelia. The fight now gets turned into a 4v5. Mundo is still healing a little bit as he gets uh, he, uh, he gets a little help of Morgana's um, Crucible. Make a kill. triple kill from the cast. And and a 3v5 fight going in favor of Team Loyal or Hangout, but no. Double kill from that Sejuani will kill him off. We might so see a window. snipe from yeah. Synchro. Synchro should be ult yeah. right now, and she does. Uh, let's just follow that ult right there. And mm, Synchro it will misses. miss. Uh, but that was a good try. Wurzlow standing at an unorthodox position, and he did really well to uh, escape from that ult. If he had walked any straighter, he would have probably died. Uh, but that was definitely a good fight for Nox Gaming. Uh, it does mean that they're six kills. They're in a deficit of six kills, but they're doing really well. Uh, the Baron will be up in a minute, so they will want to contest it. If they give up a Baron or any other objectives, I think I fear that the game is over for Nox Gaming. If that's the case, and we have to remember that this fight was five v three because both uh, Jinx and uh, J four were in the base. They were both dead. Uh, prior to the fight because of a DC from Jens and J4 trying to help her and she, he also died. Um, yeah, so that was a 3v5 and Nox Gaming, uh, sorry, 5v3 for Nox Gaming and they did well to uh, take the advantage and did well to just take down the Mundo. So that's the Mundo being shut down. We were waiting to see if that will ever happen and it does, but I don't think they can recreate it once more. I'm hoping they can because I would love to see a comeback play from Nox Gaming. They definitely deserve to make a comeback because they worked so hard to get here. After losing against uh, Team Loyola Hangout a couple of games ago, uh, then winning against Flux Gaming and now actually dominating performance against Flux Gaming. They got five, uh, all five dragons in that game. They did so well. But in this game, it seems like Nox Gaming is playing like Flux Game. Flux Gaming and uh, Team Loilo Hangout is playing like Nox Gaming, Nox Gaming in that particular game. So, yeah. because they've already got four dragons at 33 minutes and the fifth dragon is probably inevitable and I don't think uh, Nox Gaming can actually prevent that fifth dragon. Um, do you think that they're just waiting for the fifth dragon before they close this out, Todd? Uh, it, they don't, they, at this point, they don't need it because they, they just realized that they pretty much evened out a 3v5 fight. So, 
they are pretty confident that uh, they can win a straight up 5v5 fight any day. Even if they, you know, manage to burst out one of the carries, it is still possible for Team Loyalo to actually come out ahead in the fight. So they are very confident. They are moving in on that Sejuani. Sejuani is the ta target of focus right now as she wall dashes away. Seeker taking a lot of damage, not one bit tanky. As Javan's Cataclysm locks up four members in his ult, Javan will go on eventually. Sejuani is tanking up two members. But that Mundo is going on to the, um, both the carries as Cranko is still healthy. A double kill from Cranko, Javan and the support, the jungler and the support being taken on. So far it's been a 2 for 2 but uh, the members of uh, Team Nox Gaming are uh, very close to death as opposed to <coughs> complete full health uh, from that Mundo and Jinx and Castles are, are fairly healthy as well. Yeah, Synchro actually made a mistake before he got DC. His ult was uh, targeted at uh, Irelia, but Irelia went down before his ult even hit. And I think when you saw, when you said that um, J4 actually came up with such a good ult onto, uh, good cataclysm onto four members of Team Nox, I think Synchro should have ulted towards the four people that were in the cataclysm and just forgotten the Irelia because Irelia wasn't even a threat. She was. Near, she was going to inevitably go down to Forbidden Requiem, and I think uh, Synchro never uh, definitely misplayed that. But that's all right. It seems like the Mundo is just wrecking face behind. He hasn't even lost a single point of health. He's at full health right now. Uh, but after uh, you have to keep in mind that he has popped his uh, ultimate. Uh, right now, Forbidden Requiem and Garbage are chasing down Lizard. Uh, the game will be resumed in uh, five seconds. Uh, yeah, so. Cranko and Burst Lol are just chasing, chasing out Synchro. Synchro might actually live. No, Synchro does. Uh, Synchro does uh, go down to Cranko. Cranko gets a triple kill in that fight, which is actually quite surprising. At the same this time, this could possibly be game as Burst Lol Forest has to defend against two members. Uh, it's a 13 second cooldown on Irelia, so I don't think they'll be able to complete the uh, finish game right here as they do not have a lot of attack damage to do much of damage to the towers. So Garbage and Kassadin do back away for the moment but the Baron is up and available for the taking um, and we all know that uh, Team uh, Loyal or Hangout has the upper hand in this Baron fight as the Dragon is also spawning in uh, 17 seconds. We could actually be seeing a trade-off between Dragons and Barons right here as both are up in the next 10 seconds and uh, so yeah, we, we could possibly be see one of the teams taking Baron while the other goes for the Dragon. Uh, or we should see if the Mundo is actually just, you know, uh, sent to the Baron while Team Nox Gaming, I mean Team Lowell, uh, the rest of the members of Team Loyal or Hangout are sent to secure the final Dragon. Uh, Mundo can actually try and hold out against five members, kite, kite them around and, you know, with his ultimate on, see if tech, uh, Mundo can single-handedly hold uh, against five members of Team uh, Nox Gaming when they try to go for Baron. Uh, yeah, I definitely uh, feel that the fifth dragon is more worth than getting the Baron, so they might as well just go for the dragon. Mundo, as you said, Todd, should uh, try to defend that Baron uh, by, all by himself. Just on the outskirts, just trying to just poke them out with the cleaver. It, those cleavers do a lot of damage, so it will be alright for Mundo to be doing that. The game will be resumed again in a couple of seconds, We're just waiting for them to finalize it. Uh, but yeah, this Mundo is just breaking face, he's just too far and he's actually completed his build. That's Mundo right there, and uh, Jinx is nearly done with her build, she's just waiting for her last item. Uh, Synchro is just disconnected again, but he has reconnected. So we're just waiting for him to reconnect completely and just with the stable internet. Um, as far as supports are uh, concerned, Janna is doing pretty well, but uh, Sheaf is definitely doing much better. He's got seven extra assists over Janna. He's used his Mikhail's Crucible wisely. He's done, used it perfectly, actually. Um, the mid laners, well, I've got to talk about Forbidden Requiem on this castle. And I mentioned before the game, you mentioned before the game, Todd. I. Uh, Forbidden Requiem's Kassadin is just too good to even talk about. It's so good. And we don't even have to talk about it. That's Everyone knows about Forbidden Requiem's Kassadin. It's so good. And he's 13-3-13. Uh, he's got a really, really high KDA. Nearly eight, just over 8, uh, eight KDA, which is really good. Uh, it's such a professional level. This uh, You guys do have to remember, this is the second place match for the ILG. 
So whoever wins here uh, goes on to face Ruthless Gaming, uh, who is who have been flawless in this, and their yeah, Cranko is uh, Ruthless Gaming support, so he already knows how well um, Low Elo Hangout will be playing, so he will be passing all that information to Ruthless Gaming. And if Low Elo Hangout, which it seems like they will be winning this match, uh, goes on to face Ruthless Gaming, then Cranko will tell his team that uh, Forbidden Requiem uh, and his whole team, in fact, is uh, forced, to, forced to reckon with. And we might actually see a Mundo ban out on that game because I don't think anyone wants to face this Mundo uh, anytime soon. And uh, this is just so much, this is so well played by uh, Team Loilo. Hang on. But other than that, what, what do you think? What, do you think there's a chance for a comeback in this game, Todd, or is this just over? Um, it if it's a 5-on-5, five, five five, it's definitely over. Even a 4-on-5 actually at this point of time looks like uh, will go in the favor of Loyola Hangout. But um, what is concerning to me is, it, is the next round. Will it actually, you know, if, if, if the Loyola Hangout actually runs out of the pause time and Jinx actually disconnects, it will actually be a 4v5 and it completely depends on uh, if uh, Team Knox Gaming are sportsmen enough to actually use their own pause time to allow the Jinx to reconnect. Because this uh, is a very high priority I think the match. Jinx just reconnected, so that's good for her. But if she DCs again, she uh, I doubt that they're going to allow it. Especially because uh, it's a second place matchup. So, uh, this is not particularly the time to think about sportsmanship, is it? So... I doubt that they're going to allow it. They've already allowed the 10 minutes uh, standard time. But if they do allow it, that's beautiful sportsmanship from them. That's uh, That would be lovely. Uh, but worst of all, just takes a cleaver to the back. Uh, garbage is just chasing. Just see how strong Garbage is. He just walks into five people without any fear at all. You might see the fifth dragon just coming up. Uh, there is no trade-off between the dragon and the baron. I actually think that uh, Nox Gaming should be threatening the baron right now rather than trying to stop the dragon it's just impossible to stop this dragon you can't face off 5v5 against uh uh team loyal hangout i think oh they're actually going for the baron now so i think nox gaming definitely made a mistake over here now team loyal hangout gets a fifth dragon and uh the baron so they're just gonna close this game out in a couple of minutes in my opinion the dry the baron is going down really really fast nox gaming is late to the party and yeah. the Baron has gone down. Yeah, so I told you, Ram, that uh, Nox Gaming is, are supposed to be going down to the Baron. They know that they can't possibly win a 5v5 team fight, and you know that uh, Team Loyal or Hangout are actually going to prioritize the Dragon over the Baron, considering that they have four previous ones. So they should have actually just gone to the Baron and see if they could possibly get it. If, the, if at all, uh, Team uh, Loyal actually misplayed our team fight horribly with the uh, uh, fight dragon buff and considering these people have if they manage to get the baron they could possibly come out ahead but they, uh, currently they're just giving up everything they give up dragon and the baron so basically that's a baron up team with five dragon buffs so yeah. and they are fed as well uh, not to mention the most of these members are like two to three levels above the opponents so yeah this pretty much looks like the final push coming from uh, loyal hangout yeah, I have to say that Mundo yeah. is actually level 18 and Forbidden Requiem is also level 18, so two of the strongest champions are level 18. Burslaw might be going down. Burslaw will go down to Synchro. Synchro gets excited. Uh, Seeker will be the next one on the menu. Seeker does go down to Kassadin, uh, played by Forbidden Requiem. Lizard will also go down to Kassadin. Kassadin with a triple kill. Uh, uh, Jinx, uh, sorry, um, Panda and Pocket actually picks up the fifth kill. That's an ace. Garbage is just standing under the tower, as macho as he is. Uh, it pops his ult and that will keep him alive. Uh, he's actually getting a lot of region even under the tower. So that will be the end of the game and Loilo Hangout has beaten Nox Gaming yet again to secure second place and uh, go on to face off Ruthless Gaming on Monday, the uh, 5th of April. So guys, make sure to watch that game. We do have the semi-pro league tomorrow at 3 o'clock. So that will be Team Fidgets versus uh, Team Nexus Destroyers. Uh, but yeah, cheers uh, cheers for watching tonight, guys. Um, this is DJ Ram along with Co-Caster Todd. It was lovely uh, casting with you, Todd. Uh, you're an amazing player and an amazing caster at the same time. So thanks for joining me and uh, casting this game. 
But guys, uh, congratulations to Team Loyola Hangout. We'll hope to see you tomorrow and on Monday. Thanks for watching, guys.